Photoshop on your iPad gives you access to Photoshop's core tools and features in a modern interface designed for a touchscreen. Let's take a look at where the essential features are and learn some of the touch gestures that you'll use as you work in Photoshop on your iPad. On the left side of the screen is the toolbar. It contains some of the commonly used tools found in Photoshop on the computer. Tap a tool to activate it. If that tool has options, it opens the Tool Options bar. In the Tool Options bar, you have an icon for each option. For example, here's an icon for brush size, and when I tap that, I can adjust the brush size. You can move the Tool Options bar anywhere else on the screen by pressing on its handle and dragging. You can even drag it onto the toolbar, and it docks itself there. If a tool has a small caret at the bottom right, like this Selection tool, that means it has alternate tools behind it, and you can access those by long pressing on the tool or double tapping the tool, and then select the tool that you want. At the bottom of the screen are the foreground and background color chips. The foreground color chip controls the color used by any tool that applies color, like the brush tool. You can switch these two chips by just swiping down or up on the color chips, and you can select a color by tapping the foreground color chip and selecting a color in the color picker, or you can use the eyedropper tool located above the color chips. You may have noticed that there's no zoom tool or hand tool like there is in Photoshop on a computer. That's because on a touch screen, you use gestures to zoom and pan around an image. To zoom, use a two-finger pinch or a two-finger spread. If you want to put the image back to fit on screen view, then tap the move tool and with one finger, double tap the image. Another way to zoom is to scrub over the zoom indicator in the title bar. Down at the bottom left of the screen is the Innovative Touch Shortcut, which is a great shortcut for quickly accessing additional tool functions. For example, I have the Move tool selected, and if I select the layer that contains the Dino Bird, I can just click and drag and move the Dino Bird freely. But what if I want to move the Dino Bird only left to right in a straight line? Then, I'll press and hold on the Touch Shortcut, and I'll drag, and now the movement of the Dino Bird is constrained. And up at the top right, you can see a blue tooltip that tells you what the touch shortcut is doing. If I slide my finger to the outer ring of the touch shortcut, now the function changes to duplicate layer. And so if I drag the dino bird, that gives me a second dino bird. Now let's take a look at the layers panel. Layers, of course, are an essential feature in Photoshop on any device. On the iPad, you have two views of the layers panel. Right now you're looking at the compact view, which is that vertical line of thumbnails. Each thumbnail is a separate layer in the file. To see the more detailed view, go to the bar on the far right, which is the taskbar, and tap the second icon there. The detailed view is useful when you're working with layer masks, or when you need to see layer names. To switch back to compact view, tap the top button in the taskbar. If you want to see the properties of a layer, make sure the layer you want to affect is selected, and then tap the third icon in the taskbar. And here in the layer properties, you can impact the opacity of the layer, the blend mode of a layer, which affects the way that layer blends with the layers below it, and more. There are more icons in the center of the taskbar that are related to layers. For example, to add a new layer or a new adjustment layer, long press the plus icon in the taskbar. And there's a three-dot menu with many other layer-related options for you to explore. I'll tap the Layer Properties icon again to close the Layer Properties panel. Let's take a quick look at the top right, where you'll find an Undo button and a Redo button. Each time you tap one of those, you go back or forward one step in time. If you want to export or share your document to another location, tap the Share icon at the top right and tap the question mark icon at the top right if you have questions about how Photoshop on your iPad works. There you'll find a list of gestures that you can use with Photoshop on your iPad, a list of shortcuts you can use with the Touch Shortcut feature, and a list of shortcuts you can use if you have a keyboard attached to your iPad. So that's an overview of the basic layout of Photoshop on your iPad. Great new features are being added all the time, so continue to explore the interface to find even more. 
The Touch Shortcut in Photoshop on your iPad is a great way to streamline your workflow because it lets you quickly access additional features. This can be especially useful if you're not using a keyboard with your iPad. Let's check this out. I have the brush tool active in the toolbar and I'm just going to come in and paint a stroke over the sky. Now with the brush tool still active I can press and hold on the touch shortcut in the lower left and it lets me erase without having to come out to the toolbar and choose another tool. When you're using a tool with the touch shortcut pressed down you'll see a blue label in the upper right that tells you what the shortcut action is with the selected tool. The function of the touch shortcut is active as long as you keep it pressed down. If you move your thumb or finger to the outer part of the touch shortcut you can access the secondary function for the active tool. With the brush tool this lets me use the eyedropper to sample color from the image. So as I'm pressing down on the outer ring of the touch shortcut I'm going to come over and tap on the clouds to the left of the ship to sample that color and place it into the foreground color chip. Now I can release the touch shortcut and paint with that color just to suggest that there's a little bit more fog obscuring the ship. By default the touch shortcut is located in the lower left but you can drag it anywhere on screen that makes sense for how you like to use the app. The touch shortcut is not just for changing the behavior of the active tool. It also works with other features. For example, you can use it as a quick way to select multiple layers. In this composite the ship is on one layer and its reflection is on another layer underneath. No matter what tool is active in the toolbar I can use the touch shortcut to select multiple layers. I'll tap on the ship layer to make it active and I'll come and press and hold on the touch shortcut and now I can tap on the thumbnail of the reflection layer underneath to add that to the selection and you can see that they're both selected from the blue outline around the thumbnails. I'll release the touch shortcut and now with both the ship and its reflection layer selected I'll choose the move tool at the top of the toolbar and now I can move both layers together and reposition them in the image. We've only covered a couple of examples for how you might use the touch shortcut. There are a lot of ways that you can take advantage of this very useful feature. If you tap the help menu in the upper right corner you can view a list of the available touch shortcuts. Once you get used to how it works the touch shortcut can be an effective way to speed things up and easily access common functions in Photoshop on your iPad. When you launch Photoshop on your iPad it opens to the home screen which shows you thumbnails of your recent documents and offers some options for where to start your workflow. One option is to start work by opening a new blank file. To do that, you would tap the Create New option at the bottom of the screen. Then in Photoshop on your iPad, you could add other documents to the canvas using the Place Image tool, as you'll see how to do later in this tutorial. A second option is to start work on your iPad by importing an image from another location. To do that, you would tap the Import and Open option, and then you choose the source of the file, which could be your camera roll, a file storage location you use, or your iPad's camera. A third option, and the one we're going to focus on in this tutorial, is to start by opening a cloud document. The first question you probably have is, what's a cloud document? Cloud documents are your Photoshop documents saved in Adobe's cloud. What makes cloud documents so useful is that you can see them and work on them whether you're using Photoshop on your computer or Photoshop on your iPad. To see all your cloud documents on your iPad, tap the Cloud Documents option on the left side of the home screen. That opens your Cloud Documents Organizer, where each of the thumbnails is already a cloud document. Tap one of the cloud documents to open it in Photoshop on your iPad. This is a Photoshop document, a .psd file, that already has two layers. To bring in another document on a third layer, tap the Place Image tool in the toolbar. Here you can see the various sources from which you can bring in a document. I'll choose the camera roll on my iPad. In the camera roll, I'll navigate to the photo that I want to bring in, and I'll select it. And that returns me to Photoshop on the iPad in transform mode, where I could scale, rotate, and move this new document. But it looks like it's a pretty good fit as is, so I'm just going to tap Done to exit transform mode. 
To finish up this composite, I'll apply a layer blending mode to the selected layer of the dancer. In the taskbar on the far right, I'll tap the Layer Properties icon, and in the Layer Properties panel, I'll tap the Blend Mode menu, and I'm going to choose the Multiply Blend Mode, which hides the white background around the dancer against the colors on the layers below. Now, if you're an experienced Photoshop user, at this point you may be looking around for a Save button. But here's the important take-home point about Photoshop on the iPad. There is no Save button, and that's because every image is automatically and regularly saved to Adobe's cloud every few minutes while you're working on it in Photoshop on the iPad. And that means you don't have to worry about saving, and it means you'll always have access to an up-to-date file wherever you're working in Photoshop, whether that's on your iPad or on your computer. Whether you go idle, flip to another app, or head back to the home screen, your documents are automatically saved.